This piece of Lisa is being brought to you by Mutual Security Credit Union. Find out more at MSCU.com. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you. Oh, yes. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you. It's President Obama's 50th birthday. And I thought, who better than to analyze President Obama's birthday than my dear friend, wonderful, wonderful guest on the show, Ellen Whitehurst, who you may know if you're a feng shui astrologist yourself or an admirer of feng shui or astrology. And she appears uh, in writing and on video and in radio and on television in so many forms, particularly with her widely read Huffington Post column i village red book the list is endless but she's also a very dear friend and a very smart lady welcome back to the show ellen whitehurst very glad to be here lisa especially since that was my doppelganger singing that song oh really are you marilyn monroe i wasn't aware of that (laughs) i wasn't aware of that can you fit into the dress ellen (laughs) no (laughs) no not even the left boob would fit into i i i know the feeling she was something else wasn't she she, she was, was the greatest. Yeah, the greatest. she was something else. So, okay, so Ellen, I got to, you know, I got to, I got to pull your commodities brain for a second. The stock market tanked over 500 points today. It's all I can really talk about. Lisa, you know what? I said to my assistant, Tammy, earlier today, I said, I'm supposed to be going on the show to talk about Obama's <laughs> 50th and his astrology. And I know what we're going to end up talking about is the stock market. Well. So let's do. Well, I mean, you're, let's, let's just talk about the fact that you're a former commodities trader who has an awful lot of experience experience in financial world so our audience understands that you 20 know, years on wall street there 20 you go. years on wall street okay. and i still in my monthly newsletters which anyone can find on ellenwhitehurst.com i do add a bit of financial astrology every single month and i think you and i both will be in agreement that i told you you personally as my friend to buy gold when it was trading yes, at 700 yes yes you did and, and I didn't, that. by the way. I did not take your very good advice because it was <laughs> well, confusing you know what? to Today, me. Today, anybody who is looking at gold, this is what is called an outside day in the gold market, which means that we made a new high, but then we closed at a, a new low for this cycle of the gold market. It's not a, a good sign for the gold market. And in fact, there's rumors and, and more rumors of margins being raised on uh, gold futures. So whenever that happens, you can expect to see probably 100 to maybe 150 or $200 off the high. That would be something if you were looking to get long gold to look at. But I'm suspect of this whole ideal of gold being the savior from this stock market free fall. Um, yes, we can't always be printing fiat paper at will to support the dollar. But in fact, what happened today was that the European, um, the EC, the European governments, in terms of them telling us two months ago and then again two weeks ago that all of their banks had passed the quote unquote stress test. And the ones that were particularly in question were quote unquote healthy. That's where astrology came in and warned. And I've been saying this in my newsletter for months now. I actually named the date. I said that you would see a precipitous decline in the U.S. stock market on August 2nd and the three days following. And I've been saying that since the April newsletter. Oh, my God, Ellen. And, and how do you base that prediction? Is it the alliance of the moons and the alignment of the moon and the stars? It actually, Lisa, what what we look at is we look at where the planets are. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. And I don't want to get too convoluted or complicated, but we look at what the planets are predicating. And in this case, financially, the planets were predicating deception on the part of major players in the money markets who, when that deception was revealed, 
would cause or create this kind of a free fall that we saw today. Well, is that any really, is that any change from ever? In other words, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. well, that, that would be the cynical outlook. Yes. But um, yeah, I, I don't embrace that. Although I will certainly hug the fact that we are never told what all the facts and figures are. So um, without question, there was a substantial amount of evidence that came from financial astrology showing that for this part of the year, we would see this kind of decline. And I have been calling for 10,000 in the Dow Jones for five months now. So it, what did it close at today? Below 12? It closed below 11, I think. Below 11. Yeah. So it's it, not it, that it, far it away anymore. For over 500 points. So. Okay. There was, there was definitely that um, nature of fear and panic selling, which you never want to see either because that doesn't reflect what the reality of the situation is either. So um, we would hope to see the next couple of days something kind of straightened out. Uh, it, the, the dichotomy is, is that for the last week... Oh, by the way, Ellen, my, um, my sources here are telling me that the Dow actually closed today at 11,383. Three. Okay, so okay. close enough, close okay. enough to under 11. Sure. Thank you. Um, but And thank you. But what I'm concerned about here, Lisa, is that, you know, when we have this sort of panic selling, that there's no rhyme or reason in the markets. And what I'm also concerned about, and what I was just about to say, is that for the past week and a half to 10 days, someone's been buying the U.S. Treasuries, um, which is... You mean buying that? Well, now, what does that mean when somebody buys an awful lot of U.S. Treasuries? It Dumb it down for me. It's counterintuitive to the stock market falling. It means that somebody knows something that we don't know. So. I, I don't, I, I'm not following. Okay, if somebody explain to me normal patterns and why this is a deviation. Uh, normal patterns would be if you see the stock market beginning to decline, that normally people would step away, um, investors, big money, would step away from investing in U.S. Treasuries. And particularly when we're in the middle of a debt ceiling um, crisis where we can't seem to find agreement uh, within our Congress because of one particular party that seems to be holding everyone else hostage, but I won't get into that right now. Uh, so, you, so normally the, the savvy investor is going to stay away from buying U.S. Treasuries. They're going to stay away from buying the bonds at that point in time. So when you see the stock market potentially facing a crisis, which, you know, antithetically enough, what happened was they did reach an agreement on the debt ceiling. Yep. And then fell out of bed anyway. Well, so here's my question for you. So if money runs away from the stock market and money runs away from bonds and money runs away from treasuries, where does the money go? Well, here's the thing. You know, I'm really, Lisa, I, I'm so a little bit tired of hearing the prognosticators or the talking heads saying the money has to go someplace because guess where the money can go? Under the mattress. That's where the money goes. And then we're all screwed. When the money goes under the mattress, we're all screwed. Okay. Because there's no more circulation into the uh, general uh, uh yeah, into the general money supply, yeah, which will, into which the will, money will supply, well, no, into which, the which, moment, which, no, thing. which means that anybody that has a store or business can extract it from anybody, so they can pay their bills they and the circular, bills right? And they can't borrow, right? And the circular, you know, basically the economy floats as it's on Peter trust and confidence. It, 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 it's Peter it, to Paul. It, yeah, it is. And so, if we can't do Peter to Paul, which was the whole agenda in 2008 when we were bailing out. Yeah, I know. So we were printing money right, hand over fist. I know. And at that time, no one's buying gold the way that they are now for safe haven. At that time, everyone's saying it's okay to print this fiat money because it's going to start circulating in the general money supply, and it never did. Well, no, it really never did get to the people it was supposed to get no. to. No. No. And that was part of the problem, for right. sure. Uh, so President Obama was born August 4th, 1961. And what would you have predicted, Ellen Whitehurst, about his character or his future based on that birthday? Well, you can see um, the sign, the, the zodiacal sign, or the sign in the zodiac that he's born under is called Leo. Mm -hmm. Leo is the lion, and the lion is the sign that takes center stage. They like to have the spotlight on them. They're very um, good 
at being the actor. They're very good at having a huge audience. Leos love their audience. So you could see that he was born to be a leader. Leos are leaders. They are the lions. They're courageous. They're determined, full of strength. In his particular case, though, he's got kind of a weird thing because although he's this um, excellent, excellent politician, he has what's called Moon and Gemini in fourth house, which is something that is extra it's an extroverted moon but when it's in the fourth house it's the guy who's on the train who keeps the conversation to himself as opposed to talking loudly on his cell phone which is what we expect from leos we expect them to want to be the center of attention at all times so they need for you to pay attention to them even in the restaurant when they're yelling at the waitress He's not that guy. With this Gemini moon, well, Gemini moon normally means talk, 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 talk. But he actually is what we call an introverted extrovert. And I think, you know, you sent me this email earlier, and you said, you know, sometimes it's frustrating that he doesn't actually be more uh, front and center. Yeah, I I see him as, in a way, leading, I call it sort of groupthink, passive-aggressive. That's sort of how I describe him. And that's actually absolutely positively, and and you are a psychic, whether you want to believe it or not, and I know you think that's, you know, woo-woo talk and and hokey-pokey, but he is a guy who keeps... To himself based on his planets, based on, and again, I don't want to get too, too very, very convoluted here, but seventh house Pluto in Virgo and sextile to Neptune, opposition to Chiron, all of this speaks to him being not only extremely fortunate and extremely fair, almost to a fault, very, very balanced, but he cares so much about fairness and justice that he doesn't have that killer instinct. <laughs> sounds like a little like me. I'm that way in life. Exactly, Lisa. And you and I have discussed this. I am. He I am that way. He cannot go for the jugular. No, it, it, and that neither. annoys a lot of people. Yeah. They want him to win at any cost. But he cannot do it because he has this first house. First house is self. It's your destiny. It's how you view yourself. He has his first house in Chiron. And Chiron is the healer. He, the, his whole mission is to heal. It's to heal heal this country, it's to heal this economy, and he doesn't care if he's hated for it. He well, does not care. Well, the, you're right. He's the one that said, I don't care if I'm a one-term president. Remember, I, and, and he will not be. So I did a little, little <laughs> extra bit of um, investigating, yeah. and it looks like he's going to suffer greatly in the ratings um, through September of this year, 2011. And then he's going to start to sort of balance out and maybe even come a little bit up in his um, in his popularity.